Hey y'all, I'm Nate, and I can't wait to show you all my bass collection. So many of you have been asking, and I just want to give a quick thank you before we jump in. You know, I started playing bass when I was just 14 years old, and it quickly became my dream to be a professional bass player. I could not have done this without your support, and the support of all the brands that I'm about to show you. So thank you for all your kind words and all of your encouragement over the years. I'm very happy to be giving something of value back to this world. And again, thank you for helping me do what I love while being able to provide for my family. Without further ado, I'll jump behind my camera and point us towards the bass rack. So here they are, the basses in all their splendor on my DIY bass rack. I built this myself. It's essentially just two recycled desktops and four wooden beams wrapped in carpet. Okay, here we go. My Kiesel Zeus 5 string. I'd call this my number one bass for live performances. It's joined me around the world a few times on tours with Devin Townsend and Porcupine Tree, and you can see it on the cover of my five-string bass book. It's an amazing bass. It's perfectly balanced. It plays like a dream, has an incredible palette of sounds, and Jeff Kiesel added a finger ramp for me for all the advanced picking stuff. It's never given me any issues, and it's always a joy to play. This is my signature Nate Navarro sub-octave bass from Lignum. They're a Croatian company of two incredibly talented brothers who design from the ground up and build everything mostly by hand. We conceived the ideas behind this bass together, and we paired it with my signature Bartolini pickups and preamp to emphasize the relevant frequency range. I'm so incredibly happy with how this bass turned out. Lignum is creating some of the best work I've ever seen. If you want to learn more about this bass, or even pick one up for yourself, check it out at natenavarro.net. This is my 10-string J bass from FM Guitars. Clearly it's a beast of a bass, and it totally brings me out of my usual bass territory into more of a tapping realm. FM Guitars is owned by my longtime friend Felix Martin. We met while students at the Berklee College of Music in Boston, where we gigged and made a few albums together. I'm super happy to see his guitar brand taken off. <laughs> We've heard bass guitars referred to as tools, and they are tools of our trade, but this bass is also a work of art. My custom R8 fretless from Jens Ritter, named The Family Joy. 
Jens and I wanted to create something that would have a flexible yet defined voice while simultaneously crafting an emblem of something very special to me, my faith and my family. We address tonal aspects with a combination of magnetic and piezo pickups, allowing us to achieve an electric fretless or an acoustic fretless sound, or a blend of both. I have this strung with the Dario tape wound strings, and the combination has worked perfectly. I've used this bass on tours with Porcupine Tree, as well as session work, including some session work with Steven Wilson, and I couldn't be happier with the sound. I wanted the bass to look beat up, because that's just how this life can feel sometimes, right? But I also wanted to tie in the beauty of life. I have markings from my wife, from my son, and icons of my faith. I'm deeply grateful to Jens for making me my most special bass, and I'm happy he made an appearance as well. This is currently my favorite bass from Fender, the American Ultra P bass. Right now I have it strung with the Dario flats, and that's a Boss GK5B divided pickup, in case we want to get synthy. I use this bass all over the place on video lessons, covers, session work. I really enjoy the way it plays, the rolled fingerboard edges are especially comfortable, and the compound radius fingerboard, which flattens out as you go higher up the neck, has a very natural feel. I often get asked about the thing between my pickups. This is a finger ramp, which makes playing different techniques more comfortable. I get it from a shop called Bonk, spelled B-O-N-K, on Reverb.com. <laughs> Here's my Harley Benton Pro Series MJ-4MN. I've spent hundreds of hours playing this bass, and I think it's the best bass I own for the money. It's under $300, and I honestly prefer it over some of my much more expensive basses. It's easy to play, very ergonomic, perfectly balanced. I like the zero fret and the active passive options. I'm sold on this bass many times over. My Rec W Hope 5 is one of my most unique basses. The luthier Daniel Kopjar out of Croatia takes an innovative and beautiful approach, utilizing hand-carved pyramid blocks across the entire semi-chambered body. In addition to relieving weight, the pyramid chambering enables an even resonance across the entirety of the fretboard. No matter where you're playing, all the notes ring out with crystal clarity and an equal presence. The Dingwall NG3 Sheldon and Nolly made some magic with this model. I've really enjoyed using it for demos and session work. I tracked some of Devin's Empath record with it, and it really fit the bill. 
I appreciate how thoughtfully designed this base is in regards to the gently rounded body and the weight distribution, the tonal options from the three Dingwall pickups and dark glass preamp. This is an excellent base if you're looking for Nolly's tone and much outside of that as well. This is my Spectre Hollow Flash 5-string defretted. I got this off eBay when I was 15, and I've used it on so many projects I can't even remember. Felix Martin, my first solo album, Devin Townsend, tons more. Years ago, when dubstep was having its heyday, I played in a band called Pin Panel. We did a cover of Skrillex's song, Scary Monsters and Nice Sprites, and I used this bass in that video. That video ended up going viral, and it was awesome and terrible at the same time. I got so much online support, and simultaneously, so much hate from the bass community. It was a crazy amount of hate. The saving grace of the situation was the appreciation of the fans that we were able to play to live. We had so many great times connecting with different people through music and making good memories. <laughs> Well, here's a cute little thing. My Black Star Carry On ST bass with a scale length of just 23 and a half inches. Believe it or not, this little guy can get some convincing heavy tones. And they just keep getting cuter. This is my Mayonis Cali 4. And while it's small, it's actually a display of incredible craftsmanship. Look at the neck through construction, with this open pore purple heart and wenge neck flowing seamlessly into the upper wing with an ergonomically sculpted heel. I wish all of my bases were built with such attention to detail. Another cool feature is that it has a built-in headphone amp so you can play on the go. Here's my Franz Vega 5 Multiscale by Luthier Xaver Tremel out of Germany. This bass feels like a battle axe in your hands. The construction is just so solid, it greatly improves the sustain and gives the notes a sharper attack when you want it. I've enjoyed connecting with Xaver and witnessing how his lifelong passion for Luthery manifests in all of his builds. <laughs> Here's my Fender American Vintage 2 1954 Precision Bass. Playing this thing feels like a piece of history. It's a period accurate replication of the original 1954 P bass that changed music forever. It has the same body, neck, hardware, finish, year specific pickup voicing, and even the case is the same. What I like most about this bass is that it totally influences the way you play and approach the music.
This piece of alien weaponry comes from Overload Guitars in Rome, Italy. This is my custom Achilles bass fitted with triple Aguilar pickups and a dark glass preamp. It's so solid it might as well be made of marble. The level of craftsmanship is off the charts. <laughs> Harley Benton has a J-style bass kit, which I turned into this guy, the S'mores bass. It was a fun project and a nice way to get outside, and it actually sounds pretty sick. At less than $90, the kit is totally worth it if you're into that sort of thing. Here's my Spectre Euro 4 LT in red fade gloss. Its Bartolini custom wound PJ pickups with dark glass preamp sound amazing, and they can slice their way into the front of any mix. Its voice covers a wide frequency range, and it's super present. I find that it pairs well with technical slap lines and heavier distorted tones. My Kiesel A2 5 string. This bass is mean, y'all. It's a 34 to 37 inch multi scale with triple Kiesel tritium bass pickups, dark glass preamp, and it has incredibly clear and punchy sound, even when you're way down tuned. This is an amazing bass at a great value. <laughs> Here's my custom Mayonis Jabba 4 string. This bass has served me well over the years, and it has a couple of battle wounds to show for it. I've used this bass on tour with Devin Townsend. The extended multi-scale lends itself well to that style of music. I still have the tuning labeled on the back that I was using for the Empath Europe tour. Hip shot tuners with the drop tuner, Aguilar pickups, Mayonis preamp, Babix full contact hardware bridge. This bass is for real. This is my favorite bass that Court makes, the GB Modern 5. It's lightweight, well-balanced, has Nordstrand pickups and a Mark Bass preamp, and I'm a huge fan of Babix bridges. The string spacing is on the wider side at 20 millimeters, which I like for gospel slap sort of vibes, and it has the tone to match. <laughs> This is my Jawbone bass from Byte. There are certain things that I don't like about this bass, but man, they really got it right with the in-house electronics. This is a fantastic sounding instrument, and it's a pleasure to play. Byte prides themselves on their level of customization, and they're always adding more options. <laughs> Thank you. 
Here are my four and five string Fender American Ultra J basses. Between my video lessons, demos, and studio work, these get a lot of playtime, and for good reason. Many bassists and producers are familiar with the tone, so it serves as a good reference point when testing different gear or sending in stems. It's just hard to go wrong with a Fender. <laughs> Here's my Sterling Stingray Ray 4. It's a killer bass for the money, and some players have said that the Sterling Stingrays are an even better value than the Ernie Ball Stingrays, considering the price difference. This one came set up great out of the box, the neck work is nicely done, and overall it plays and sounds good. <laughs> These are my four and five string Harley Benton Marques basses. Harley Benton always impresses me with the quality of their builds. They consistently play and sound just as good as basses at three times their price range, and the Marques basses are no exception. They have active electronics, and look at those beautiful tops. It's honestly hard to fathom how they deliver these at such an affordable price. <laughs> This is my Ibanez EHB 1506 MS, a lightweight six string headless multi scale made with beautiful woods, Nordstrand pickups, and a pretty adventurous body shape. I always appreciate Ibanez's willingness to be adventurous with their bases, especially at such a big scale of production. They've done a lot to help the progress of new ideas in bass design. My Kala U bass. This bass is so much fun to play. I often use it for acoustic jams at home, and it sounds super fat when you plug it in.
Here's my Fender American Professional 2 Fretless Jazz Bass. The Jazz Bass tone lends itself well to fretless territory, and I chose to stick with round wounds for a brighter tone. I remember being intrigued the first time I saw a Strandberg Boating Guitar, and when I heard that they were releasing a bass version, I knew I had to have it. This is my Strandberg Bowden 5, complete with the Endure Neck Profile and headless multi-scale super lightweight construction. The bass can take you places tonally with its custom Nordstrand Big Rig Humbucker pickups and dark glass tone capsule preamp. This is my Spectre NS2A from the Kramer era. I got this bass while I was a student at Berkeley to replace my dear NS2O that was stolen at a gig. If you ever come across an NS2O with the most hideous modded cutaway, let me know because it might be mine and I miss it all the time. Anyways, this was a great era for Spectre and it's held up so well over the years. I've used it on tons of projects and I can only wonder about the gigs it's been on before I was even born. This is my PV Cirrus 5, one of the later models from Indonesia. It has an excellent balance of deep lows, warm mids, and a bright quick attack. The clean tone is on point and I really like it paired with overdrive and distortion. It's a solid build and I do hope they come back into production one day, maybe even in the US. We'll see. <laughs> Here's my NS Design CR5. There's so much I enjoy about this bass, both playing-wise and tonally. I've used it on songs like Starcasm by Devin Townsend featuring Steve Vai. The CR5 has a die radial body. The back is radiused to fit to your torso for added comfort and stability, and the top is radiused more tightly for better picking hand ergonomics. The electronics were developed in collaboration with EMG and offer both magnetic and piezo options, which I like to blend together. My ESP D-5 has a great feeling neck for playing fast. It has a thin U contour and the fingerboard radius is just under 16 inches. You can get the action super low on this one, so it's also great for playing slap. <laughs>
This is my Fender Player Plus Meteora bass. It's a solid bass coming out of Mexico. The active electronics can get you a bright and defined tone, or go for a more classic sound in passive mode. Of course, it looks awesome, it plays great, and it balances surprisingly well. This is my Court A5 Beyond. This bass has a unique combination of options between the Babinga top, single cutaway, Bartolini pickups, and multi-scale neck-through construction. The string spacing might feel a little narrow at first at just 16 millimeters, but it can also make things more comfortable for the fretting hand. When I'm looking for a massive, punchy, J-bass sort of tone, I'll often reach for my Kiesel Thanos. This bass has served me well on a number of studio projects, tours, and you can see it on the cover of my four-string bass book. It's perfectly balanced, it plays like butter, and it fits so easily into any mix. <laughs> This is my NS Wave Electric Upright, and man is this thing cool. It feels like the perfect halfway point between a bass guitar and an acoustic upright. It has a built-in pickup switch, optimizing the electronics for playing finger style or with a bow. And the whole thing fits in a gig bag, not much bigger than your standard bass guitar gig bag. Here's my Jackson Pro Series Spectra. Talk about a beautiful poplar burl top and matching headstock. It's neck through with Nordstrand pickups, a nice ergonomic build, minus maybe the neck pickup. I'd prefer that to be moved back a little. Overall, it's a joy to play. <laughs> Here's my PRS SE Kingfisher in faded blue, with hip shot hardware and in-house electronics. It can get a cutting, snappy tone, or dial it back for a warm sound with plenty of lows. It's a great playing bass.
that concludes my base collection video. I hope you've enjoyed it, and thank you again for all of the support over the years. If you want to keep supporting my channel, check out my website, natenavarro.net. You can see my books, my music, tabs, my gear. There's a ton of stuff there, so go have fun. I'm Nate Navarro. Take care. Thank you.